when I started thinking about it, I was kind of irritated and maybe upset about the whole thing because no one tells you this stuff. Yes, they talk about the 4% the, the rule, but how are you going to get there? How is the average American supposed to save that much money so they don't run out of retirement? So let's start with Social Security, right? So uh, the average payout for the average American retiring right now is about $2,000 per month. And that's tough. It's your only income, right? $2,000 per month, $24,000 a year. That's going to be tough going for it. And so if you're right now and you're like, you know, if you're going to think of retiring after 34, okay, projections are that retirees will only receive 70, 70% of the full benefit. So you receive the form and whatever's on there, okay, it's not going to be the entire, it's going to be a fraction of that. And so from that forward, the average try therefore gets paid only $1,800 a month Social Security. Some people actually say that Social Security will actually be bankrupt in, 20, in 2041. So it might not be left at all. So that cannot be a strategy. It could be a, maybe a small sliver of what you get paid, but you shouldn't count on it. Right. So now you're thinking, okay, cool. Well, my, my plan is I'm going to do 401ks and I'm going to save and invest enough for retirement. So let me challenge that. You may be familiar with the 4% rule, right? And it's usually used to decide how much you can spend in retirement of your nest egg. That means that you can spend about or sell about withdraw 4% of your portfolio. And so, okay, that's cool. Think about it. Though. If you want $80,000, let's say you want to live of $80,000. And you know, if your income is higher then you, well, you want more than that, then you need $2 million saved. Okay, now that is before taxes. Okay, so you need $2 million saved. But the average American only has about $170,000 saved by 65. Okay, so the average American is far short of $2 million. Okay, so if that's your plan, how are you doing with that plan, right? Are you on track for saving enough to satisfy the 4% rule? And if not, what is going to be your plan? Talk to the average American. Their biggest fear is running out of money in retirement. And back in the day, and when I was younger, uh, that was my plan as well. In fact, I didn't even think about it too much. I did get the Social Security thing, and I saw it on there, and I think at the time I was getting like, this was like 20 years ago, I was getting like $800 per month. I was like, ah, okay, that's not very interesting. I'm just going to keep socking away money in my 401k, and I should be fine. Didn't really think about it. I really didn't think about it. And I didn't certainly didn't know that if I wanted $8,000 per year, I'd have to have $2 million saved. And so when I started thinking about it, I was kind of irritated and maybe upset about the whole thing because no one tells you this stuff. Yes, they talk about the 4% the, the rule, but how are you going to get there? How is the average American supposed to save that much money so they don't run out of retirement? And this is frustrating. It actually makes you really angry that a lot of Americans are retiring and they're like, crap, I can't retire. I got to keep working. That's why you see so many people still working for crying out loud. And some of them, yes, they want to work. You got to be productive, but many of them working because they have no other alternative. So what's the solution? The solution is not the stock market, okay? And therefore, either the solution doesn't exist or some kind of alternative investment. And so I think my number one call to action really is to be more open-minded to alternative investments that are outside the stock market. And you're looking for alternative investments that solve some of the problems in the stock market, right? The stock market is volatile, right? So if you want to draw down on your portfolio because you're retiring and need money for your kids, go to college, for example, and we're currently in a recession, well, you don't want to be selling. That's stupid. Like you don't want to, you want to be selling when you're going up, but now you got to sell and you're selling in the down market. That's bad. Okay. And also it doesn't really generate cash flow unless you do very sophisticated uh, stock option uh, trading, the stock market or dividends, but they're so low that they can't really generate cash flow. And then of course there's taxes. There's significant taxes and fees. Every time you sell, you pay the fees on the, on the actual transaction and then you have to pay the capital gains taxes. So it doesn't make it very efficient. So you're looking for alternative investments that address some of these things. So be open to other alternative investments. And it's scary because people around you, your buddies aren't investing in alternative investments. What am I talking about? I'm talking about real estate invest, uh, mobile home parks, multifamily, right? Turnkey investments. I'm talking about oil and gas. I'm talking about precious metals. I'm talking about ATM machines. Like these are strange investments. And the problem with it is that they're strange and they're unfamiliar. But my challenge to you is start paying attention to them because the alternative investments is where real wealth and cash flow are being built. And so I challenge you to actually start looking into stuff. Get on some of these things and get on their newsletters and check out those, those operators who are you know, who are basically marketing these kinds of things and start looking at them. Now, we'd love to educate you on multifamily syndications. That's our specialty. That's the only thing we do right now. And we love multifamily syndications because it's it's largely recession resistant. If you look over the last 50 years, multifamily has been very resilient in down markets and has been very profitable in up markets. I like that combination. It limits the downside that I have in those. It appreciates appreciably uh, over time because real estate increases in value, as we all know, but it also kicks off credible cash flow, which you can use to actually pay stuff with. 
So you can actually use it as an exit vehicle from a job you have or a practice that you're in or anything like that. And there's really nothing else that allows you to do that. And then number three gives you unprecedented tax benefits that really no other investment gives you. Uh, oil and gas, for example, the tax benefits are enormous as well. And, and some of them kick off cash flow as well. So you have to look at these alternative investments and see what purpose they serve and then build that into your overall portfolio. So if you're interested in multifamily syndication right now, we would love to have you a conversation with you and introduce you to the wonderful world of multifamily syndications. Just go to nighthawkequity.com forward slash invest and just schedule a call with us. It's a no obligation call. We want to get to know you, what you're looking for. We might give you some reading material, some homework. Hey, we'd love to educate people. Uh, but more importantly, we want to be able to share some upcoming opportunities with you. We can't do that if we don't know you. All right. So it's very simple. Just go to nighthawkequity.com and just click the join button and schedule that call with us. We would love to have that conversation with you. All right. Hope you found that valuable. Lesson number one is alternative investments. Lesson number two, check out multifamily specifically. And we'd love to be your partner in that. Catch you next time.